Chelsea. I wanted to start with your Chelsea, David, because you had a big result the other night when you, you know, gone in 82 seconds and you beat Man United and there was a big buzz around. A lot of people that back Poch showed their chest. A lot of people that back these players beated their chest. But you go away from home to the worst team in the league. And yes, you dominated the ball. But in every other area of that game, you were outclassed by a team that will get relegated. A team that has is full of championship players. Just another really poor day for Chelsea. What, what went wrong in your opinion? Um... <laughs> It's a weird question in terms of what went wrong because it's expected, which is which is a weird thing to say. It's a weird thing to say, but follow my train of thought here. These players, um, they just, you know, they've just beaten Man United. We've won El Midico. It's 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 beautiful, yeah. We're not officially the worst, we're technically not the worst team in the top six because we beat Man United in one game, even though they beat us earlier on, but we won El Midico. So they've done it in whatever seconds. Cole Palmer's the best player in the world, blah blah blah, whatever. Um, we get to Sheffield United, all those players are still off the high. And then, you know, Poch makes a couple changes to the team and we've got no gusto. We've, we have another fullback and, you know, our goalkeepers doing what our goalkeeper loves to do. And surprisingly, young players were inconsistent. What a shock. What have I been saying all year? It's the same thing. Like, it doesn't shock me that our team that has been struggling against the worst opposition this whole season goes away to a team that needs points, even though they may technically already be down, like meant, like not officially mathematically, but they're probably down, um, and lose points. It doesn't shock me because it's what I expect. I don't get angry anymore because it is what I expect. It's not that I'm dropping my standards. It's just I understand the situation of what the team is. As, as I'll keep saying, this team is meant to be good in 2027, 2028. So I'm not going to expect consistent elite performances in 2024. It doesn't make sense. We can we have the players. We can control the ball. We can play. We can play things that look really, really good. But again, we just struggle to create. We either either we create enough chances to win games and our players don't take it, or we have a situation like we had yesterday where it's we don't create chances full stop. That that's that yesterday's biggest problem was well apart from you know. The fact we keep conceding two goals every game, it's really hard to win games when you, you know, you're, you're guaranteed to lose two. But we also really struggle in key moments to control games. And right now I'm looking at my midfielders. I can't lie because I am someone who really wants Enzo and Caicedo to do well. The other bloke who runs in midfield, yeah, cool, whatever. He can, he, he, has, he, he who shall not be named, he can do whatever he wants. Um, but right now they just can't control games and it is a big problem. And I think part of that is the manager setting them up wrong. But I also think part of that is they need to take control of themselves and go, we are better than Gustavo Hamer and Jack Robinson. Like we're just better players than them. So regardless of what our manager tells us to do, we should have the capabilities to beat that team. So does it shock me? We didn't, we didn't win. No, but you know, that's the situation we're currently in. So I would love to give you, like, I'd love to be like, no, Enzo's the best player in the world. And Cole Palmer's, you know, got 30 GA and Petrovic's been the best 5 million signing I've ever seen in my life and blah, blah, blah. But I'm I'm not one of those Chelsea fans. I'm I'm more calmed down with it. No, so, I, I get that. I mean, I think sometimes people go in on it, it on Enzo Fernandez, But uh, Paddy, I'm not sure how much of the Chelsea game you watched yesterday, but it was an absolute horrendous showing from the most expensive midfield player ever purchased in England. And I understand that Poch's system has got holes in it. I understand the coaching and the drilling needs to be better. But you're up against a championship team, essentially. And he didn't create. He didn't win any ground duels. He didn't win any tackles. Serious conversations, in my opinion, have to be had about Enzo Fernandez, And they seem to be flying under the radar left, right, and center. Oh, we can't hear you, mate. I'm not too sure if your mic's plugged in or not. Uh, Hello? There oh, we yeah. go. Sorry. Know. Apologies. Uh, no, I think the reason there's not more being made of it is because it's Chelsea are just a shit show in general. So it's not kind of as highlighted. I do think, I do think Enzo is a serious player on his day, but I think 
this Chelsea system just it hurts a lot of people. But yeah, it's he's been shambolic um, a lot uh, for a large part. But as you said, as I think the reason it's no not more is being made of it is purely because uh, there's he's probably not the worst of the lot. Where the scrutiny should be the biggest for him, considering how much he was. But yeah, I I, I feel sorry for Chelsea fans right now because it must be like painful to just have to do anything about that club because my my head would be on Mars. I know we've had a few bad periods, but Chelsea are in a dire, dire way. No, they they are. I mean, they are dire. And I think that look, my club, Man United, are in the mud. There's absolutely no doubt about it whatsoever. But for Chelsea, it just, it doesn't seem to rain, it pours. True. I, I, I Chelsea just in a bad way. Like I, we took, we look at all these like financial things happening right now. Like there's the worst is yet to come for Chelsea bizarrely. Um, and I don't know what's going on. Todd Bowley hasn't a breeze. The guys who run that club, Clear Lake, is it? They don't. Ha- they have not a breeze. Um, but I think out of all the players to be given out, Enzo is the one that you kind of can have faith in because you know he has it in there. So I think that's probably why more fans aren't freaking out. Because it's like, if Enzo plays bad, fair play. But I'd be more worried about employing Conor Gallagher and him being one of your better players, seemingly, because he is a championship footballer. Um, But yeah, I don't know what's going on at Chelsea. I don't know why they've backed Poch to this point. I think Poch is a a severely, severely overhyped manager. The first thing they need to do is get rid of him. Um, Yeah, it's, it's enjoyable to see. I must say, I do enjoy seeing Chelsea in the mud, though. I will admit, I will admit that. Do you know the thing is, again, like, I'm someone who's not potch out just because, one, I don't believe there's a better option that's available right now. And two, regardless of who I think you bring in, these players are still going to make, like, the most ridiculous mistakes you've ever seen on the football field. Like, some of the things that I've seen this year have been genuinely criminal. Caicedo on, on against Man United on Wednesday literally has the most basic... I'll just pass it back to my keeper and we keep it ticking. We'll tune it up in the game. No issues. And he just plays a through ball. Like, I mean, like, again, like he's had some really good games this year, but it's like the mistakes just keep happening. Yesterday, Thiago Silva, you know, great, like one of the best centre-backs we've had at the club in a while. But even he still is like making these just brainless mistakes of just passing it to forwards in really bad areas. And the only reason we don't concede another four or five goals is because we actually have Petrovic in goal instead of Sanchez. If we had Sanchez in goal, I honestly, I don't even think Cole Palmer could overcome Sanchez in goal. That brother is, he's lost. He he doesn't know what he's doing. So, can I, just, uh, Dave, David, can I yeah. pose you a question quick? Because yeah. um, yesterday, yesterday on, on, on the show on This Is Football, um, obviously Hassan's channel, yeah, we, we, we were speaking about the Chelsea situation towards the latter end of the show. And, um, Obviously, we posed a question out to the Chelsea fan, which was, I think if you had a player of the ilk of um, Mane or somebody who's a a goal scorer that can be on that left side, yeah? I think you guys would be battling for top four right now. With the the chances that were being created when, when Poch was first there and how many chances you guys were creating and the fact that nobody is able to put those chances or put those chances into the back of the net. If we look at um, how many chances Sterling gets, how many chances that a lot of these players gets, I'm not going to go uh, go too hard on on Nicholas Jackson because I'll be real, I don't think he's a goal scoring striker. I don't even think he's a striker. I think he's more yeah, of a winger, know. to be honest. No, I, I generally, I think, I think he's a winger. I don't think this guy I is a it. striker. No, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be realistic. But I think if you had another goal scoring winger, a, a winger that if they get their chance. 90% out of 100, they're putting it away. And Mane, if he was in that team, I guarantee you, you're fighting for top four, possibly even getting it. Because I, I, I think you're quite way too much. So so, let me get to you. You're saying that this Chelsea team with one top class player on the left is better than this Villa and Spurs team. No, I think I think that they'd be able to create as many chances if they if they were playing how they were playing at the start of the season. Yeah, but Sam, had that, 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 that prolific goal score in that team. I get that point. I but think answer, that they answer the question, Sal. Answer the further. question. You think with a with a top class left sided attacker, this Chelsea team is therefore better than Spurs and Aston Villa? 
I wouldn't say they're overall better because they've still got a problem with their defence. But I think they'll be scoring a lot more goals. If they're, not better, more goals. if they're not better, then how can you predict them to be above them in the league? <laughs> No, because, because competing, no, no, competing, they're competing. competing. I'm not saying they're, they're going to beat them and they're going to. But you, but you said, no, you it, said but... competing, but you think they'd make top four. So that tells me you think they're better than Villa and Spurs. No, no, but listen, they can be, they can be good at scoring and maybe defensively not be as good. Because let's let's face it, Chelsea do give up a lot of chances. I think Sad's but argument if they is... have, if they have that prolific goal scorer in there, I think they'd score more goals than they concede. And I think they win more games. And I think you know, they'll be higher up the table. I understand. What I think your point is, is like we create so many chances and there are games where we've done that and we've still not come out with the result. You only created something. six against Sheffield United, though. No, no, no. no, no, but Sheffield, no I Sheffield, just, United, if you look at the Sheffield start United of the season. Game. Yeah, but you can't no, no, just pick the games United where they did create chances. Okay, You've got to okay. do it Sheffield overall. United game, the Sheffield United game was a weird one because we actually didn't create anything full stop. Like it was very like I don't know how we managed to score two goals yesterday because we didn't this, is, this is the problem with that against other teams. Sorry, David, sorry, we, David. Create, we create four or five. Like we create three, you, three, you four, did start three, the season four, creating. You did start the season creating, and I was praising I Chelsea. I, I understand this point, but I don't think we'd finished off four. Like, However, I, yeah, yeah, for me, I, I and there is a train of thought. If you started off and were converting those chances, and confidence grew, you'd be in a better position. But there's so many variables to that to that argument. For me, I know there are a lot of people now in football that like data, and I think statistics and data play a part, but it doesn't tell the full story because if you look at Man United's data, goals scored and chances created is down there with the relegation teams, chances conceded, ball being progressed against us, down there with the teams that are in relegation, but we're sixth. So data for me is not... Uh, it, it can be used as part of your prediction... But you've also got to w look at the games and look at the results and 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 assess it for me in, in real football terms. I think you've got to look at the two. And I do think with, I don't think it's one. I think if Chelsea had three or four players, 25, 26 years of age. By the way, you said Mane level. Yes, if you had four world-class 25, 26-year-old players in this Chelsea team, would they be better than eight, you know, 10th or 9th? Yes. But do I think Poch has the ability to get this team above all those other managers in this league now? No, I think Potts still is a big problem at your club. And I get the they brought a lot of young players and the inexperience, but his team selections, his structure of this side can still be judged irrespective because I see it with my club and the holes are all over the place and the kamikaze way we play. Chelsea are very, very similar indeed. You could still set your team up to be resolute in, in, in shape in and out of possession, hard to break down, plug in holes, putting players in their correct positions. You can do that even with a lack of experience and a lack of overarching quality. How do we know that? Because teams that are down the bottom, although they lose a lot because they lack the quality, a lot of them have better structures than Chelsea. They definitely have better structures than my club. And that for me is the coaching. So I still don't think with one top class player, you, you, I don't think you'd be in the top four race. I think you'd maybe anywhere between five to 10 points better off than they, than they are now, Chelsea. But I think there's more problems than just they need two or three additional players. Right. I think the manager is a concern. And I do think something, and I've been thinking about this a lot in the last few weeks at Chelsea that needs to be looked at, is the overarching standards that the new ownership have in terms of where they expect to be. Something, uh, something just smells off. And the reason I say that is the way that they brief the media with such bullshit all the time. Like they're, they're sort of their written press. There's so much PR coming out. That's just a big red flag. So I think there's more than just players to address at Chelsea. I think there's a structural issue, a managerial issue, and, and a player concern as well. I just think at the, the start, whole, he wasn't I, a problem. Though. Personally, I think Arch. the whole squad composition is just wrong. They're like that's I said when the new group came in, I'm okay with you clearing out the squad. If you want to rebuild a squad, you'd start off with 25, 26 year olds and then start in, injecting the youth afterwards. So they've got something to work with whereas what i think the group's trying to do is go we'll start young now have that squad grow and then when we start injecting more youth into it the youngsters who we acquired first will have the most experience to be able to pass it down i just I don't, don't i think i think that's the model they're trying to go with but i don't think it's going to work yeah that, david that's why the, the reason they go with that model is also because of the loophole that they try to use which is the amortization thing like no 26 year old wants to do an eight-year deal or nine-year yeah. deal yeah, so you so you, so you realize that players who are already in the prime, who are like 25, 26, 27, who are 
kicking it already. Um, would not want to come to Chelsea at the time because of the kind of deals that Bowley would have given them. It's the younger players that can take such a deal because you're like, you know what? I'm 21. If I take an eight-year deal, I'll be 29 when I leave Chelsea. I can still go somewhere, you know, kick it for another two years and then boom. So um, I think that's where that's where there's a problem as well if you look at it because you're not going to find any player in their prime. Literally take that eight-year deal with you. You know, I don't. I don't think we're gonna. I don't, obviously, we can't keep doing the eight years. Yeah, you can't thing. keep. Yeah, you can't. They can't keep doing it. I'm just saying, like, when they did it. it. Like, you can, like when, you can it, when you're not in Europe. <laughs> now, yeah, those, eight year, those eight year deals are going to become a real problem for Chelsea down the line, because yes, they might work for some people to tie down good talent, but so far Chelsea have tied down bums to eight year deals, and they're going to be sitting there collecting their wages if no club wants them. So, I think financially, Chelsea are, have created the kind of a chasm for themselves in a few years, especially with the strictness of the rules coming in. And the longer they stay out of Europe, the more demand is going to be put on those and stretches. So I think it's a worrying couple of years for Chelsea, really, really big time. The only, um, the only, the only thing that I'm, the reason why I'm, I am personally not too worried financially as of right now is one, I feel like billionaire owners aren't just furiously throwing money around. Like I, they, they want to make money. So I think they'd have to think about what they want to do. But also like, we we handed ourselves in effectively for cheating in the past, which I know might put us in a bit of trouble. But I I believe our owners wouldn't do that if they weren't like honestly trying to stick to what they should be. I think they they tried the eight year thing to try and be clever with it, and if it had worked out, oh look how smart we are because you know billionaire owners they're gonna have egos and they want to be the smartest person in the room. I get that, mm. but I don't mm. think they would intentionally drive the club into like disregard but i'm you know i'm not going to sit here and act like it's not going to happen because it does look like like i'm not yeah. i'm not oblivious to it it does look not great i, no, I, I hear you